So a new set of benchmark scores just leaked and people think they might actually be from GPT-5. If they're real, we're looking at a massive jump in performance. Meanwhile, XAI's Grok 4 just dropped this week. And unlike the leak, these benchmarks are confirmed real and seriously impressive. Google also admitted that AI now writes 50% of their internal code. And while all this is happening, the AI talent war is heating up. More companies are getting involved and the stakes are higher than ever. Let's get into it. All right, so what's the deal with these GPT-5 leaks? If you follow any of the major AI accounts on X, you've probably already seen the screenshot of supposed leaked GPT-5 benchmark scores. Now, the first time I came across this, I was super skeptical, as I'm sure many of you are, or were, because I mean, literally anyone can create this. But then again, it was starting to get picked up by a lot of the major AI news accounts. And so I decided to dig a little bit deeper. And what I found is that these were actually just predictions. The original post was literally made by some random X account. But what happened is that a relatively well-known figure in the AI community on X, known as Satoshi, or Satoshi Guy, who's also supposedly an OpenAI insider, replied to it. He wrote, little more spice, but almost accurate. This was enough for some of the AI news accounts on X to pick it up. And in only a few short hours, it was everywhere. I should mention though, this same supposed OpenAI insider, Satoshi, who probably triggered this whole thing in the first place, later claimed that the benchmarks were fake in another post. So there's that. Plus, other more credible people in the AI space have now also come out and said the benchmarks are fake. And a lot of them are actually foreseeing a delay. You probably heard GPT-5 was coming this summer, possibly even this month. And that's because Sam Altman himself said it was coming this summer. But just recently, he also said their first ever open source model, which they claim could be the best open source model out there, is dropping within weeks. So between that announcement and all the talk about delays, I'm thinking we're probably not getting GPT-5 this month. That being said, getting a state-of-the-art open source model from OpenAI this month would still be pretty cool. And while we're talking about OpenAI, it was reported this week that they're also working on launching their own browser aimed directly at competing with Google Chrome. This would be a fully AI native browser, likely with multiple agents built in. And if they do it right, I could honestly see it completely changing the game. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, the AI talent war is heating up. We already saw OpenAI lose a bunch of top researchers to Meta and now they're firing back. They've poached several key hires from XAI, Tesla, and of course, Meta. Apple also found itself caught in the crossfire this week, with their top AI exec, Ruoming Pang, heading over to Meta. At least they'll probably be putting him to use over there. But while all this poaching is going on, and with rumors of $100 million signing bonuses floating around, the real winner in all this is NVIDIA. They are now officially the first company in history to hit a $4 trillion market cap. I guess as the saying goes, during a gold rush, don't dig, sell the shovels. Now, we of course also got Grok 4 this week. I already covered this release in full in my last video, so definitely check that out if you want more details. But here's kind of the quick recap of this drop. So the main thing that got people's attention, I think, was the insane benchmark scores. There is literally a math benchmark called Amy that Grok4 Heavy gets 100% on. It aces the benchmark. As you can see, Grok4 is also state of the art in many other benchmarks. Now, if you're wondering why there's a Grok4 and a Grok4 Heavy, well, the Grok4 Heavy is basically just a bigger and better version. Kind of like how you have OpenAI's O3 model, but also O3 Pro. The key difference though is that while Grok4 Heavy is actually somehow more expensive than OpenAI's Pro Plan, coming in at a whopping $300 a month, the reason for this is likely because Grok4 Heavy is a multi-agent system. It's not just one model. When you prompt Grok4 Heavy, it actually spawns multiple instances of itself in parallel that each tackle your question individually and then confer and share notes to decide on a final response 
or final output, which is what you see. So really, when you're using Grok4 Heavy, if you can afford it, you're basically talking to a group of expert level agents working together on your behalf. Now, there were some other very impressive benchmark scores that I covered more in detail in my last video. They also even did a real-time demo for Grok's updated voice mode, but they wrapped up the live stream with a glimpse into what's coming next. Here you can see XAI's roadmap for the next few months. We have a coding model expected to drop in August, a fully multimodal agent expected to drop in September, and a new video generation model expected in October, which they believe might rival Google's VO3. So overall, a massive release. And clearly, Grok4 is now a top contender. Now, here's a model release that you probably missed this week, Kimi V2. Kimi V2 is an open source coding model coming out of China that has absolutely shocked the industry. This model has 1 trillion parameters, is state of the art on many coding benchmarks, only falling short to Claude 4 in some cases, is incredibly cheap, and again, open source. So, I mean, just looking at the benchmarks here, this is actually insane performance. Keep in mind, this is also not even the reasoning version which is supposedly coming later. But as you can see, it's getting 65.8% on Sui Bench, 53.7% on Live Code Bench. I mean, this thing is really good. And again, open source. Of course, benchmarks don't always tell the full story, but based on what people have already been doing with this model, it seems to be the real deal. So I guess DeepSeek is not the only Chinese company to keep an eye on. Now, speaking of coding models, Google, who has been pretty forthcoming about their internal use of AI, given they're pretty much going all in on AI at this point, has been using AI more and more for code generation. According to the latest figures, around 50% of code at Google is now AI generated, a near doubling from only a few years ago. So I think it's pretty obvious that AI progress is only accelerating. I mean, just this week, we saw NVIDIA crack 4 trillion market cap, a state-of-the-art open-source coding model from China come out of nowhere, and of course, Grok4. As Google's product lead, Logan Kilpatrick says, the next six months of AI are likely going to be the most wild we will have seen so far. In other news, Perplexity finally launched their AI browser this week, called Comet. Now, this is something you've probably been hearing about for some time now, as it was announced a while ago, but it's officially here. Comet is basically just a web browser built specifically for AI, an AI-native web browser, exactly what OpenAI is planning to launch in the coming weeks. You can think of it as an AI model that is constantly looking over your shoulder as you browse the web. So if there's something you don't quite understand, you don't have to explain it to a chatbot or send a screenshot, you simply ask Comet. You can also integrate third-party data to personalize it, and have it actually take actions for you. So I truly think this has the potential to literally change the way we use the internet. I mean, Google Search is already just a chatbot at this point, with Google AI overviews. But this seems like the next step of just search in general. I'm sure Google will definitely make their own version of this, or just revamp Chrome soon enough. And finally, to wrap up this week's AI recap, I wanted to bring some attention to this insane achievement that, for some reason, not many people are talking about. It was reported this week that for the first time ever, a robot performed a gallbladder removal surgery completely on its own. As they state in the article, it managed to do this with 100% accuracy. And the procedure, conducted by a team of John Hopkins University researchers, demonstrated the power of AI, which allowed the robot to make independent decisions and adapt to unexpected complications on the fly. So obviously this wasn't done on a real living human being, it was done on a lifelike medical replica, but this is just the beginning. And interestingly, they also mention here that the robot, dubbed SRTH, was trained on videos of surgeons performing similar gallbladder removal surgeries on dead pigs. So this robot literally learned just from watching. I mean, I don't think people truly understand how insane this is, and how the healthcare industry is about to get completely shaken up. 
I've said this many times before, but once these robots become objectively and reliably better than human surgeons, then, I mean, wouldn't it be unethical to let a human surgeon perform the procedure? Like, honestly, would you guys prefer to get surgery from a human doctor who maybe only has an 80% success rate for the surgery in his career or something, and has maybe only seen the surgery dozens of times or performed it dozens of times, or a robot surgeon who has seen the surgery performed thousands of times, has done it in simulation millions of times, and has a 99.9% .9 success rate? I think the choice is pretty obvious. But let me know in the comments what you think about that. Do you think inevitably it will become an ethical issue, more so than a preference issue, is kind of what I'm trying to get at. Anyways, drop your thoughts in the comments, and as always, if you enjoyed this week's recap, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll be catching you guys in the next one.